Hey guys, you there? Welcome back to Shoot the Chit. Today I have an extra special episode for you because I'm gonna be doing a review of my new Wired Cruiser e-bike. I'm gonna give you a rundown of the features and specs and components of this bike and tell you why I chose this one and compare it to some of the other popular e-bike styles. So the 60 volt system, think of volts as your horsepower when it comes to bikes. So a higher voltage bike will be able to spin the wheel faster. The wattage of the bike, which is dictated by how many amps the controller is, is what the total power of the bike would be. So this is a 60 volt, 40 amp controller. That means this can put out a total of what? Let's find out. So I need you guys to pay attention because there will be a test at the end of this. So this is 60 volts times 40 amps. And what do we get here? Six times four. Wait, I heard someone in the back. What, would you, what did you say? Okay, so we got 24, add the two zeros together, 2,400 watts total. I personally haven't seen 2,400 watts out of this, but I have seen it over 2,200 before. So this is a 1,000 watt motor, but it peaks well over 1,000 watts and it goes over 2,000. So this controller is capable of putting out 2,400 watts. 2,400 watts is like the overall power of the bike. So most of these bikes will be 48 volt, I believe the Vinton back over there is 48 volt and I think it has a 20 amp controller. So that would mean 48 times 20 equals, I don't know what it equals guys, can you tell me? 880? Sure, 880 watts. What the fuck was I talking about? Just for reference, I did the same equation using common core math and the answer of 1307 watts. The main reasons I got this bike is the 1200 watt hour battery, which is fairly large. If you're looking around at bikes, you're gonna realize that the range numbers on e-bikes are wildly exaggerated. At some point, there's gotta be some regulations that's gonna uh, normalize these range numbers. But as of now, take all those range numbers with a huge grain of salt. That being said, I have taken this bike on 38 mile trip already, but if you're gonna be using the throttle a lot, you're not gonna get anywhere near 38 miles. This has a Hintosh, Hint Hintai, 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 1000 watt motor. The reason I really like this motor is on the inside of these, they have planetary gears and most e-bikes with hub motors have nylon planetary gears. My friend got a Be Cool Cruiser, which is actually a pretty nice bike, especially for the price. And the planetary gears on his hub motor melted and they broke apart within a hundred miles. This has steel reinforced planetary gears. So that's a big plus for me. This is a 60 volt, 20 amp hour battery multiply 60 volt by 20 amp hours equals 1200 so that's 1200 watt hours this is a 20 amp hour battery this is a 3 amp charger so that means every hour it's replenishing 3 amps so you divide 20 by 3 and you get 6.66 which possibly is the reason why this company maybe that's why they call themselves wicked e-bikes before they had to change their names watts or volts times amps guys don't you know ohm's law so this is a 1200 watt hour battery and what that means this can sustain a load of 1200 watts for one hour this bike has the capability of putting out 2400 watts if you're hammering this throttle take enough 2400 watts this battery is going to last you a half hour that just gives you a, an idea of how fast you can deplete the range. So most of these e-bikes have hub motors. That means the hub itself is what propels the bike forward. You can pedal in a pedal assist and it grabs on the cassette and it'll move the tire forward. But if you hit the throttle, it's gonna move the hub whether the chain's connected or not. So technically you can break your chain on this bike and still use the throttle and get yourself home. For contrast, this Turbo Levo is a mid-drive motor. The motor is in the middle and the power is generated here. So the power is always gonna be transmitted through this chain. So that's one thing I don't hear people talk about with these bikes much, is that a mid-drive motor, in theory, is gonna wear down your chain and cassette much faster than a hub drive motor. This is a class two e-bike. There's no throttle on this. This bike pedal assist up to 20 miles an hour. This is actually a much more natural feeling biking experience. Bikes like these are much better at climbing hills they're lighter. This is gonna feel much more like riding a naturally aspirated bike or an acoustic bike as people call them. This is a better bike all around. I'm not trying to sell you my Levo. As a matter of fact, you've kind of seen enough of it for now. 
Those are the two drive systems you're gonna see. Speaking of the differences between these two drive systems, we actually took these bikes out and raced them head to head. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the video from that now. Nice bike. What's the retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal. Specialized. Another reason I got this bike, this bike is fast. Will pedal assist up to 43 or something in the settings. You're not gonna get that fast, but this bike will pedal assist you pretty much as fast as you can pedal. I've got this bike to 40 a few times. Uh, the throttle alone, uh, keep in mind I'm 240 pounds. The throttle alone gets me up to 35 miles an hour. And you can see this bike is geared for that as well. It has an enormous 52 tooth front chain Look at the size of the front sprocket on this bike, and then look at it on this bike. Over the last week, I've ridden this bike to the gym every day, and I have no problem keeping it at about 25 miles an hour. So this bike is geared to get you places in a hurry, which is nice, that's why I got this bike. It has a seven speed Shimano Altus derailleur. These are gonna be pretty low end, but they work fine. It has a Shimano SIS shifter. This is one of the things I like least about this bike. One of the big things I liked about this bike is the BMX bars. So when you're on this bike, you're sitting in a much more upright position. So Wired also has a Wired Freedom, which is a rear suspension setup. I wanted to get one, which is a step-through model. The rear suspension has a high step. And one thing you don't notice when you see these online is these bikes are really big. I'm 6'2". I have no problem getting on this bike. I typically lean it over. I forget that it's a step-through and I don't even use the step-through feature but I got my dad a Hemingway Cruiser, which is a high step, and it's kind of hard for him to get on and off that bike. Keep in mind, when you're getting these bikes, if you're not seeing them in person, these are very big bikes, and I'd almost recommend universally to get the step through. If you, someone else wants to ride your bike, if you're not that tall, they're just much easier to handle. That being said, this is a hard tail, but with these 26 by four inch fat tires, you're getting some suspension and ride softening out of the tire itself. I haven't ridden the Freedom version to compare it, but this bike is a pretty comfortable ride. You can get yourself going fast enough where you hit some bumps and you'll feel it, but these tires do a great job of uh, shock absorption. I also have the Tannis tire inserts in these, which I would 100% recommend to anyone who's gonna get a bike like this. A four inch tire, I just assume is gonna be very prone to picking up thorns and getting flats. And the last thing you wanna do is get flats when you're out riding your bike around. Front suspension, this shock is uh, nothing to write home about. I think it's pretty unnoteworthy, but it works fine. It's got a lockout here. I believe this is some sort of adjustment. I've moved that knob around and honestly haven't felt too much difference. You know, you're not gonna do any motocross. It's no Fox 38, but this is fine for what it is. Something else I should mention, I live on an apartment on the second floor, so every time I have to move this bike to and from the house, I have to take it up and down the stairs. This bike is about 78 pounds and it's kind of awkward to pick up. So if you have to deal with stairs, you're gonna have to keep that in mind. Uh, my girlfriend wouldn't be able to pick this bike up and move it up and down the stairs. One thing that's kind of uh, offsetting to me, is if you look, the battery sticks out more on the left side and it doesn't, and it's flush with the frame on the right. I think it would just be better to have it, you know, even on both sides. I do like the stem. I mean, Neko, I'm pretty sure that's, that's an off-brand, Chinese brand, but it looks nice. It looks like a decent quality piece. You can see here the welds on the frame. The welds look pretty nice. It looks like a nice quality frame. You know, the more expensive bikes, I guess this isn't cheap, but some of the bike manufacturers, such as the Event in here, have the battery in the frame itself. Same with my, the Specialized Turbo Levo. Personally, I don't really mind. You know, I didn't buy this bike to take it to fashion shows. I bought this bike to go sailing around on those bike trails. A couple things I've swapped out already. The pedals. I don't know what it is. If there is a law that says bikes have to come with stupid pedals, but here it is. I mean, these are metal. A lot of bikes come with really cheap plastic ones, but you get caught riding around with pedals like this on the bike trail, you're liable to get your ass kicked. Has 180 millimeter disc brakes. Not much reference to that, but for a bike that goes about 40, 
I haven't had any problems with stopping power. I can lock it up. It's not because of uh, wired. This is because of UPS. The box took a hit and that rotor was bent. So I had to spend quite a bit of time massaging that rotor to get it back straight. It's not perfectly straight, just like you. These uh, brakes are fine. Tektro hydraulic brakes. Be decent handle fill. It comes with this nice rack. I did see somebody mention online that they didn't like the way this thing was mounted because you see this mounts right up here. So all the way in the back, you don't really have a support. All the weight's going here and it's kind of the weird leverage. It's rated for max of 25 kilograms, so it's about 50 pounds. Personally plan on loading, going to Home Depot and loading up lumber on there. To turn it on, you hold the power button here in the middle. See, there's a nice color display. One thing you'll notice if you get one of these, I don't know if it's just this bike, is this battery gauge is wildly inaccurate. It fluctuates from charge to charge. So I find myself judging how much range I have purely off the voltage. This will show full battery at 66. And then the next time you ride it, it'll say one battery bar at 66. So I don't know if it's a setting or what, but this battery gauge is completely useless. Got a speedometer. You have the, this is my trip meter and this is just from the week. There's a front headlight on here. Hold the up arrow. Hold it for a few seconds and your light turns on. Holding down does not turn the light off. That engages walk mode, so don't hold that down. You gotta hold this up again and it'll turn the light off. Some of the safety features of this bike is of course that light. And when the light's on, your tail light's on. And what's nice too, it's also got a brake light. I know some of the newer bikes have turn signals, but uh, I don't know about you. I don't feel like I need turn signals on a bike, but you know, I'm not gonna say no to them either. This has this nice little chain bash guard here, derailleur guard. Another thing, if you're trying to check your battery capacity, you can tap the power button here or hold it, and it shows you how much battery, but it's only four bars. But there you have it. There's an overview of the bike. 60 volt, 40 amp controller. 1200 watt hour battery and a 1000 watt motor that peaks well over 2000 watts. This bike is fast and it's very fun to ride. And I hope you'll see that while we take it out on the road. You can see now we are out on the wired cruiser. I'm gonna try and hit some terrain that I feel like people that buy this bike would wanna use this for. And in my opinion, this is what it excels at is stuff like this. This is like loose gravel. We're gonna be going through some rocks up here. And I feel like this is where the fat tires really come in handy and having the power of the motor. The wider your tire, the more resistance it's gonna have to sinking into the softer dirt. Now on my other bike, this is not very fun. You just hit the throttle and get right through that. See, I'm in pedal assist too right now. We're doing about 16 miles an hour. If I'm trying to get somewhere in a hurry, I'll crank it up to pedal assist three or four. And then with pedal assist three on pavement, I can usually maintain around 25 miles an hour pedaling at a decent cadence. I'm not a very lazy rider. I'm always pedaling. I've seen some other reviewers and they'll just sit there and hammer on the throttle the whole time. So I don't know, it's me. It defeats the purpose of uh, riding a bike if you're just not gonna get any exercise at all. So for me, this is like killing two birds with one stone. I've been riding this bike to the gym every day. I can feel a noticeable difference in my breathing and my lungs. I feel better. So I can tell I'm getting a workout. Don't let people tell you that e-bikes are cheating and that's you're not gonna get a workout. I don't understand that argument at all. First off, how's it cheating if you're having fun riding it? You're not entering it in the Tour de France. And if you're getting exercise and you're enjoying your time on the bike, it's not cheating. Same people that probably never ride their regular bike. So riding an e-bike, in my opinion, is much better than not riding any bike at all. One of the differences in this bike is the way the pedal assist is set up is there's five pedal assist levels. Pedal assist one limits the wattage to, look, I'm getting around 300 watts in pedal assist one. On other bikes I've ridden that are similar to this, the way they have it set up is you have pedal assist one and it'll just give you power until you reach a certain speed that's predetermined in the settings. So pedal assist one will be like up to six miles an hour and then two will be up to 12. But as soon as you pedal, it just gives you power until you hit six miles an hour. The way this one works, and in my opinion, is a much smoother approach, is in pedal assist one, you get about 300 watts. Pedal assist two, you get about 450. Assist three is 750. Pedal assist four, I believe is like 1000. 
and then pedal assist five is just full power. So that's a much smoother approach to me because you don't just get an abrupt cutoff at a certain mile per hour. Most of the time I'm cruising at pedal assist two. If I'm going on a ride, bike ride, if I'm riding my bike to the gym and I'm just trying to get there in a certain amount of time, as fast as possible, I'll go pedal assist three. Let's see. This is throttle only right here. See there? It's an easy 30 miles an hour. I've gotten this bike up to 35 on the throttle alone, and I've had it up over 40 with pedaling, and I believe it was a slight downhill. So this bike is fast. I've had this bike for over a little over two weeks now, and I have 250 miles exactly. Uh, the front shock, I mean, is serviceable. It's not gonna be the best. You know, if you're riding this bike in terrain like it's designed to be ridden in, you're not gonna have a problem with this shock. It's, it's more than serviceable. It is a hard tail, but uh, the fatter tires and with the Tannis tire inserts, it does soften the ride quite a bit. You're not gonna wanna take this thing to Red Bull Rampage, that's for sure. But for this type of riding, this fire, dirt roads, gravel roads, probably sand on the beach as well, as long as it's not too soft, this bike is ideal for that. I got it. Guys, I got it. Nice and smooth. Cruising along around 17 miles an hour on pedal assist two. This is great. I did a 38 mile ride using mostly pedal assist two and three, and I still had plenty of battery left. Which brings me to this battery meter here. This battery meter here is wildly inaccurate. So right now it's showing three out of four stars. Sometimes you'll pull it off a full charge and it'll have two out of four. So you can't rely on this. You're gonna have to end up looking at the voltage. Uh, 67.2 is a full charge and I believe a 48 volts is a dead battery I don't think these things will go all the way down the 48 I think they cut off around 51 but I haven't gone down that low yet so for reference on that 38 mile ride I did I believe I was around 30 uh, sorry 58 volts still it's these bigger e-bikes with especially with the cadence sensor this is one of their downfalls here. So a cadence sensor is as soon as you move the pedals forward and it detects that there's movement, it's gonna start giving you power. With a torque sensor, it gives you power based on how hard you're pushing down the pedals. So it's a much more natural feeling. These uh, each have their own use case scenarios. But one thing you'll notice with a cadence sensor is especially in the higher assist levels is as soon as you push that pedal forward a little bit the bike will go lunging forward and, and so you'll notice that especially at low speeds these things can be quite jerky you'll give it a little bit of pedal and it starts going or sometimes there's a delay where you have to like rotate the crankshaft about a half rotation and then it'll start going so i've noticed what i do now is i press i usually give it throttle from a dead stop until I can comfortably pedal on my own and then I start pedaling. So these little tight turns and corners like this, you have to be very careful with a cadence sensor bike because you can end up going off the trail fairly easy. So I am uh, deeply concentrating right now. I don't know if you can tell that from the video. This is, trail is also covered by blackberry bushes on both sides. So get stuck with some thorns or fall in the water. There's lots of fun options here. We're gonna make it. All right, I think we're made it through the forest part. Ouch! Got myself with a thorn there. Here's another scenario I think this bike does really well at, and that is commuting, and you're gonna end up riding on the road with traffic. And as you'll see here in a second, you can keep up with traffic up until about 30 miles an hour. So here we go, we're off. You notice the speed speedometer is not updating, like I told you. For some reason, it'll stick. As soon as I let off the throttle, we'll see how fast we're going, 25. The sticking speedometer is pretty annoying, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't do it consistently, but 
for some reason when I hammer that throttle it likes to just stick whatever number it was on but it is nice you just hit that throttle you want to speed up you know now we're doing 30 so we're moving along pretty quick you can make it through yellow lights make it around obstacles or you're going up a hill or something just hit the throttle it'll get you through it I'm not a big fan of riding on the road but you're gonna end up having to do it. So you can ride your bike on the road, keep up with traffic. You can ride it on dirt and gravel trails, but in my opinion, most people are probably gonna end up riding it on stuff like this. This is a regular bike trail. And this is where these bikes are really fun because you can just crank it up. And with the fat tires, and especially with the Tannis tire inserts, it gives you the freedom to take little offshoots when you see them. To me, it's mandatory to get tire inserts. I've pulled multiple thorns out of them already. I also have, I've gotten a flat, but it was a giant nail, so the tire inserts didn't help with that. So like I said, I've been riding this bike to the gym every day. And you know, I think it's weird. I, I go to park my bike at the gym and people kind of look at you funny when you park a bike, you know, especially when you're an adult. But to me, I enjoy it. It's funner than riding with driving my truck. I'm saving money on gas. I'm having fun on the way in. I take different paths. I get to get exercise positive all around. The one negative so far for sure is I did in fact get that flat on the way home and had to get a ride because I didn't have the equipment to change the flat. And at some point I'll do a, a, a video explaining what you need in a kit to repair a flat on a bike like this on the side of the trail, which is not very fun. I'm just cruising along 22 miles an hour. These brakes are plenty strong enough to stop you. And uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed that. One negative on this bike so far is the rear brake has squealed since day one. And I've also seen other people riding these bikes and I noticed that their rear brake was squealing as well. So I don't know if it's the brake pad compound or what. At some point I'll probably address it, but that's one thing I'm not a fan of. Speaking of things I'm not a fan of, uh, this bike is geared extremely high. So you'll find yourself zipping along, you come to a stop and then you get back on the pedal again. And this thing is geared so high that you can barely push the thing forward. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. There's only seven speeds. You get it going over 20, you're gonna be up five, six or seven. So you come to a stop, let's pedal to go again. And man, I have my whole weight on that pedal right now. And if you notice there, there was a full turn of the crank or half turn of that crank before it started giving you assistance. As long as we're on top of the gears, I don't like this shifter at all. Uh, I mean, it's functional, it works. To upshift, you, you click this little clicker, but to go to downshift, you have to move this, this knob here. And the problem with that is, look, to go all the way down to the first gear, look how far I have to push this forward. That, that's not very ergonomic. You, most other shifters, they have triggers for up and down. With this one for whatever, if you look at almost all these bikes in this market, in this segment, all have the same exact Shimano SIS. It works, but I'm not a big fan. So ideally, I'd like to see this bike have some lower low gears. And it seems to be the opposite of what Wired is doing. They updated the Freedom model, and now instead of a 56, Sorry, a 52 tooth chainring in the front, they now have a 56. And I wanna say that change is coming to the cruiser as well. So in my opinion, this bike is not the best at climbing. And that's not because of the strength or lack of strength in the motor. It's because of the, the gearing and let's just face it, this bike's not designed for climbing. But I found myself in positions where you want to pedal up a hill, but this bike is geared so steep, you have to rely on either cranking this thing up to pedal assist five or just hammering the throttle. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get up the hill because you can't get your legs at a fast enough cadence to get any, any meaningful power to help assist the bike. So this bike is not geared for climbing whatsoever. Let's do some high speed biking now. So this is where you can have some fun. These fat tires are very stable at higher speeds as well. So you can see, you can just zip around right here and it just feels very stable. You're doing about 25, zipping along the bike trail. You see pedal assist four, I'm getting about 1100 watts. 
So we're flying right now, 30. Just flying. All right, guys, we are at the base of a very steep hill. I'm gonna see if I can go up there, just throttle alone. If it makes it on throttle alone, I'm gonna be very surprised. Cause this hill is pretty steep. Still going. Don't know how fast we're going because the speedometer is stuck. Wow. 13 miles an hour. I have to say I'm very impressed with that performance. If any of you guys live around here, uh, you probably realize that's a very steep hill. Now it's the fun part, we go down. I'm gonna try and uh, demonstrate why having a bike like this is fun. And I feel how most people would end up using these. You just get to zip around. It bridges the gap between motorcycle and, and e-bike very well. So there's two ways to ride this. You ride it as a normal e-bike, get plenty of range, or you can crank the throttle, have fun, and not get too much range. This bike is pretty nimble, you can see here. We just took that corner, no problem. So I'm hammering it with the throttle now as well, guys. This is not how I typically ride, but I just want to show you how fast and fun you can be on this bike. And also being safe. Gotta remember there's people around. Just zoom in. Nice and stable at speed, but I noticed the handlebars will shake if I have my hands off them above 20. Not that you want to be riding around with no hands above 20 miles an hour, but I wanted to point it out either way. Okay, let's try a top speed run here. 29, 30, I'm gonna go up to pedal assist five. It's doing about 35. We'll try that again around this corner. It's like after a certain amount of wattage, this display just freezes up. 33. Thirty-eight. Woo! Okay. So we're doing about 38 there. Hopefully the video does it justice. I felt like I was moving along pretty quick. Like I said, I've had this over 40 a couple times. Ooh, that was a work. See, people say it's not a workout. I'm out of breath. So well, I can notice the difference in the throttle already. So when this thing has a full charge, it's at 67 volts. So we talked about the controller is a 40 amp controller. So at a full charge, this is giving you 67 volts times 40 amps, which is over 2,400. Oh, let's make this light. I'm down now, it's about 60 volts. So we're getting, as the voltage drops, your output, your total wattage is gonna drop as well. So full charge, these things are faster and they progressively lose power as the battery level goes down. Let's go on the dirt here. We're gonna do that because we, we can go wherever we want on our wired cruiser. This bike is a perfect balance for a cruiser bike all terrain without going too crazy you're not going to do any single track trails on this at least you wouldn't want to. i wouldn't want to you have to contact wired about the display another thing i really like about these bikes e-bikes in general is you know you can go out and have all this fun rip on the motor do whatever you want you're not consuming gas i mean you're consuming electricity but i can charge this off of my solar power bank so all of it's technically free energy I think that's something pretty cool about that. Go have a bunch of fun and not really destroy a bunch of resources or spend money. It's funny because it feels like you're doing something and you get in trouble for it sometimes, but it's legal. That's the best part. Well, I guess, you know, it's not technically class three anymore because it does more than 28, but you know, I don't think many cops in the U.S. are going to give a, are, are going to give you any second looks because of that. I'd love to know how many tickets in the United States have been given out for you know e-bike violation. I noticed my GoPro the battery is getting low and so what I do 
I have it now plugged into the USB charger all right, built into the bike. That's pretty cool. So there you have it. I've showed you the components. We've gone for a ride. Now the question is, would I recommend this bike for $2,000? Absolutely. This bike gives you more bang for the buck than pretty much any other bike in the segment. So yeah, you get the 60 volt motor, the big battery, 1200 watt hour battery, the fat tires, hydraulic brakes. This bike's got pretty much the top end of the Chinese e-bike offerings. In summary, the things that are great about this bike and things I love, number one, the speed and power. This is a very powerful bike. It's fun to zip around on the trails and it's just fun. I've been commuting to the gym every day and I'll take different paths. Number two, I'm getting exercise. You know, you're on a bike, having a fun bike to ride gives you incentive to go outside. So having a bike keeps you young, guys. I'm telling you, it makes me feel like I'm a kid when I'm out there riding around on a bike. Number three, I don't know. Look, I didn't really think out this list very well. This is a good bike. It's a well-made, good quality bike. It'd be interesting to see how these bikes would do with an 11-speed setup. I don't know how realistic that is, seeing as how most of these are 7 or 8-speed. But as I mentioned earlier, it'd be nice to have some lower gears in here just for when you're starting off. The top gears on this, the 52 tooth and the, the highest gear is fine for me as far as speed goes. The things I don't like about this bike that I specifically take issue with, number one, I don't know if it's this bike specifically or if it's all of these styles with this display, but the display does lock up when I'm hitting the throttle or pedaling hard on pedal assist five, so it'll stick and I can't tell a real update of my speed. And number two is a, you know, not so big of an issue, but it's kind of annoying is the rear brake squeaks. I'm sure that's an easy fix. Could be the compound of the pads or something, but I don't think I'm the only one as I've seen other videos and people's brakes are squeaking. All in all, this bike is absolutely worth $2,000 and it'll probably get you out of the house, which is a good thing. If you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and put them down in the comments. But until next time, guys, stay by. Bicycling, that is.